So we're here at uh, Low Web 2013 and you're showing off Ubuntu on phone. Yes indeed. Uh, so this is Ubuntu running on the uh, Google Nexus 4. Um, this is one of uh, more than 30 devices that are supported uh, by Canonical and the community. Uh, we've come along in leaps and bounds. I think the last time that um, uh, we spoke uh, Ubuntu on ARM was just in its very early stages and so here we've got it running on, um, uh, on sort of cutting edge devices but we've also got it running on ARM servers which is super exciting. So this is the exact same operating system running on HP Moonshot servers on ARM and uh, running on uh, 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 phones as well. When people talk about ARM servers, it's mostly Ubuntu, right? Sure, I, I think there'll be a diversity. I think that's the great thing about Linux, but I'm also really happy that Ubuntu is at the center of a lot of the um, innovation that's happening around servers generally, on the cloud, uh, new form factors for servers, um, uh, Intel Nukes, we have a great little project which is uh, sort of lots and lots of Intel Nukes, um, and then uh, ARM servers as well. And Intel making ARM servers, maybe. Uh, I mean, there was some announcement and maybe they will, I, I'm just talking, sorry. But uh, how can it work on 30 different phones already like officially supported? Uh, well, so it's, it's a, it's, that's the wonderful thing about an open source project, an open source community. We lead the work on, uh, on a couple of the key phones and then community folks do the enablement and, uh, and support for different platforms. But it's really easy, you know, and that's why a lot of companies, a lot of phone manufacturers are doing these bring-ups now in-house. It's really easy for them to do. Uh, they take their standard sort of Android kernel and then uh, they bring up the Ubuntu experience uh, on top of that. So, uh, there is some challenge on ARM when there's a GPU drivers that are some kind of closed and stuff. Uh, are you pushing people or...? Sure, and part of that is sort of, you know, helping the GPU vendors see the value opening up, and uh, we're seeing really great results there um, from from all of the major players. You know, they're they're revealing more and more of the things that the free software community needs to know to enable their devices with free software. But we're also finding it easier and easier to work with them. You know, I think they're all interested in what we're doing on mobile uh, phones and tablets. The GPU vendors are really interested in the fact that this this platform does phones, tablets, and PCs. So if you sell a really powerful chip, wouldn't it be great if that could go, that same chip could go into phones, tablets, and PCs. And uh, so that's why we have good relationships with the GPU vendors uh, and with Intel, and, um, and you know, why I think everyone's quite excited about the work that we're doing. So how do you plan to expand Android? Like, uh, like basically, kind of like dual boot or boot in Android and all that stuff. Yeah. So how, big, how important is that compared to only running Ubuntu? Um, I think it's really important that we recognize, you know, that Android is a very part of a big part of the Linux ecosystem today. You know, I think traditional Linux people don't like to think of Android as Linux, but I think of Android as Linux, and I think it's really good. Um, I think it's important for us to figure out how to make it easy for Android apps to work on more traditional Linuxes as well. Um, and so I, I do see us as kind of expanding and uh, being part of the broader, you know, open device ecosystem. It'd be cool if uh, many, many Android devices just had an Ubuntu, Ubuntu icon. You click and you kind of like boot into Ubuntu. Yeah, that would be kind could of cool, wouldn't work? it? It could work, yeah. So uh, patches welcome. Patches? So uh, what does that mean? Does that mean you need to work a little bit more closer with Google or you already do? Or So I think the parts of Android that are important for what you described there are, are still open source. Right? I think there's a lot of controversy about which parts of Android are open and which parts are closed. But I think that the core infrastructure pieces are all open. And so we could probably engineer something like that by collaborating. For, to run Ubuntu on ARM, you, you do kind of use some of the Android... Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Call it, yeah, right? We, we, we use the Android device driver model, essentially. Um, although it, it really helps if we're working with the manufacturers so that we can, um, we can optimize the drivers for both Android and Ubuntu. All right, so, uh, so are you gonna, do you already speak on stage? Are you going to speak? Or what do you, what do you I think I'm due to here? speak tomorrow. I'm on a panel talking about the, the opposite end of the computing infrastructure end, which is uh, cloud and supercomputers. Ubuntu is running on the fastest supercomputer in the world today, and uh, we're running on all the biggest clouds. Um, so uh, so we're, we're kind of stretched from the big infrastructure all the way down to tiny devices, Internet of Things, and so on. That means you're not bloatware. Um, well, I think this is one of the great things about open source software is the transparency makes it difficult to put things in there that your users, you know, don't want. Um, that doesn't mean that we, you know, can, can build a single lean thing that suits everybody, but, you know, Ubuntu is a basis for so many different expressions of free software. Kubuntu, LXC, and, you know, all, all of the different desktop environments have an Ubuntu face. Um, uh, and, you know, I don't think that's bloatware. I think that's, that's kind of optimal way. It's the optimal OS. That's what you want to do. That's a very cool way of thinking about it. Where did you start Ubuntu? 
I started Ubuntu because I thought that the, the free software community needed to, to have a, an expression of itself that was um, both free and commercial. You know, I think it's really important that open source software is able to go into environments where they need it, uh, they need um, professional commitments behind it. Um, you know, I don't want schools running insecure software and I think they should be running free software and so we needed to find something where the economics and the terms would suit everything from schools to, you know, government defense departments, which are the sort of opposite sides of purchasing capacity. Um, both civil projects, but you know, very, very, very different. And I think I think Ubuntu's achieved that, right? We, 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 we stand on the shoulders of giants. There's all of the upstream projects, Debian and so on. But I think we do add something, and uh, I'm really proud of the work that the, that, that the Ubuntu community does. I, I you know, I, I think that it's a really um, um, important and tricky piece. But ultimately, if you don't do that, then the, the stuff is just kind of theoretical for most users, right? We, we make it real for users. They can install it. They can use it. They can trust it. So uh, you want to make the world a better place? Sure. Don't don't we all want to achieve that, right? I think uh, life's life's too short to, to be focused on anything else. And uh, you're powering. Uh, I'm just guessing here. The U.S. Army and the Chinese Army. All, everybody's <laughs> using Ubuntu. I suppose it, it turns out that it yes. could be. But I, you know, I think that um, I think that that uh, uh, you know that's not a key audience for us. What we want to be is a platform that is widely trusted. Um, it, you know, surveillance and um, and uh, infrastructure compromises are a very hot topic today. To me, it's really important that we figure out you know how to use openness as a mechanism to create a trusted platform that is trustable by you know the French and the Chinese and the Americans. Um, we certainly are not you know we're a truly global organization. We have no interest in working for one or another side in any sort of ideological fight. Well, we really are interested, we're interested in being on the side of the user. Um, we've never been asked to compromise the platform, and we never will compromise the platform, and we're so distribute that, distributed that it would be difficult to force us in one way or another to do so. And I think that's also a really important thing that free software brings to, to the world, right? It brings a platform where you can verify why you should trust that platform. And there was a couple years ago you showed on stage a really cool laptop running Ubuntu, uh, ARM powered. Uh, I think it was NVIDIA maybe powered. And uh, uh, but now you went a little bit to the phones and stuff and tablets. But uh, would you still like to see a lot of ARM powered Ubuntu? Ta yeah. Laptops? So a big story for us is this convergence. You know, the design work that we did in the phone. The, the really hard thing is that we were designing a phone, a tablet, and a PC experience and a TV experience all at the same time. That's enormously challenging, you know, you're trading off really subtle, deep things. But I think we've achieved it. And so, you know, what I'm really excited about now is that we have a platform that scales across all of those different environments. That means, it doesn't necessarily mean that you only have one device, but it means that you, you have a familiarity and a fluidity across your devices that's really useful. And you have the potential to have a single common device. Uh, if the chip makers, let's say, I'm sure NVIDIA works with you, with ARM and uh, Qualcomm, I guess, because it's in a mix. But uh, let's say some Chinese ARM CPU makers like sure, Rockchip. Me MediaTek, Rockchip. Um, all winner. winner. Are yeah. they already working with you? Yeah, we have uh, Ubuntu devices on pretty much everybody's sil silicon now. So, but basically, all the silicons—they all working with you, but they could work even more, or um, what? So different, different degrees of collaboration. I think some of them they've done their own internal enablement, so it's unofficial and unsupported, and they can't ship it commercially. But we know that they've done it so that they can demonstrate it essentially to buyers. Uh, in in some cases, though, we're we're formally engaged with the silicon vendors. We, we 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 certify Ubuntu on their platforms. They can ship it commercially. That's increasing important as we look at servers for example right because in, in, a, in a consumer electronics device you know you, people don't have the same expectations of being able to, 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 to mix and match software but in the enterprise you do you want to be able to choose your enterprise software and cho choose your server and put them together and have them work and we are the piece that kind of has to make those two sides kind of fit all right so uh, thanks a lot and uh I'm um, looking forward to more. Uh, how about all these Chromebooks? I'm hard. Yep. Uh, they kind of support Ubuntu, but is it official or not? Or is I think it's it be great. cool you know, if, I, if, if it I was even more official that you just dual boot from an SD card or uh, install Ubuntu on Chromebooks? Like so officially? I think, you know, I think the, the my impression of the Google guys is that they yeah. actually very sincerely do have a commitment to openness. You know, I think that's a big part. Of, you know, people over the years have gone to work for Google, and my sense is that. Even though they get a lot of criticism and there are some gray areas and all of that, I think the Chrome team in particular has a very strong 
um, commitment to openness. They, they want to see the web as an open platform succeed, and that's just that's just one reflection of their commitment to openness. So I, as far as I know, you can on Chromebooks you can generally either install Ubuntu kind of inside a web container, or you can uh, you can flick a switch and install it directly on the Metal. Um, and I think that's great. I think it's great that the Google guys have done that. I don't think you would see that from you know some of the historical players. I certainly wouldn't expect Oracle to enable you to flick a switch and install Ubuntu on your new Spark stations. Um, so, so I think credit Google, to Google for doing that. Google should have a setting menu uh, inside setting that says download and install Ubuntu. Click, it comes. Well, you know, officially, know. it's not my place to, to, to design the settings menu for, for, for Chrome. I think they will take a wise, smart decision about you know how to express that capability for developers and so on. You know, I think Chrome has its audience, and Ubuntu has its audience, and there'll be some intersection between those. And I think the Google guys do a pretty good job of supporting the overlap and the, the real intersection between those two. They can do Ubuntu. Uh, they do. You know, they do. They, 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 Most of the Google is running on Ubuntu. Well, I don't know how you would categorize most, but I think it's a popular platform in, in Google, and I'm kind of proud about that. 